20 years ago, Puma came out with a running shoe called the Puma Inhale, one that I am quite frankly not that familiar with, but I feel like I've seen them before. I think we've all had that one coach that wears the same running shoes at every single training session for years and years and years. This kind of looks like the running shoe that that coach would wear. Not really my style, but definitely not the ugliest thing in the world. I don't know why this is here. What is the ugliest thing in the world though is the football boot version of the Puma Inhale. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Puma Future Retro, a football boot designed to represent the 20th anniversary of the Puma Inhale, a classic running shoe from the Puma brand. And as you can see, the football boot is pretty much as ugly as it gets. And if for some reason you do think this looks good, wipe your screen, it's probably smudged. Looks aside, and don't worry, we'll be going over all of the details in today's video. The upper of the Future Retro is actually unique to this special edition model, of course, sitting on top of the normal Puma Future 5.1 sole plate and stud pattern. So it might not look the best, but maybe it actually performs the part. Now the boot's pretty much as terrible as it looks. Which is why in today's video, we'll be going over why the Puma Future Retro just might be the very worst top end football boot of 2020. So if you wanna learn more about these, including how they fit, feel, and look on feet, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if by chance you are interested in a pair of these for yourself, I don't know what for, but maybe you want a pair. You can click the first link down below or the little pop-up in the corner of the screen. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal $220 retail price. Aufgrunder Material Bashafin Height Kan S Zu Fabrivagdragonin Komen. As far as extras go, the boots come in a pretty ordinary Puma box that is gray and black, which is typical for their special edition models. And they do also come with a string bag, which we don't often see with Puma boots. It's very similar to the Adidas ones in that it's a black mesh material, but the mesh itself is probably two or three times thicker than the Adidas one, so the quality is quite good. Puma logo on the front, strings in black, and it does have the zipper pocket on the inside as well, which is kind of nice. It gets a string bag rating of 20 out of 33.3. As for the boots themselves, as we've already covered, they are very ugly, but I wanna explain why they're ugly because of course the inspiration for the future retro is the Puma Inhale running shoe, which is now 20 years old and a lot of older footwear in general. I don't think it was aged well from a visual standpoint, but the Puma Inhale had a very unique aspect to its design inspiration and I had to write it down because I couldn't possibly remember it. The design is inspired by proper breathing technique for running needed to excel at maximum capacity. So according to Puma, that is what breathing looks like. I honestly thought it was flames. Now in fairness to Puma, I suppose that if you're really familiar with the Puma Inhale running shoe and just a big fan of it in general, you'd probably recognize this particular design. But for me, I was totally clueless when I saw them. My first impression was just, wow, those are super, super ugly. What the heck was Puma thinking? And even now, knowing the inspiration, I still pretty much have the same opinion because I understand why they would want to pay homage to what is viewed as a classic running shoe within the Puma brand. But if the execution on a football boot is going to look this terrible, why do it in the first place? You can see the upper itself is a mesh-based synthetic material. Obviously the running shoe would have been a mesh base with synthetic or possibly even leather overlays. I'm not entirely sure, but you can see they've gone with TPU overlays to kind of give it the look of the running shoe itself with this kind of structured panel here at the toe. You can see the Puma form stripe is actually embroidered along the edges and it's a completely different material to give it that black to white fade design. Has this happening here at the bottom, which I'm assuming is some detail from the running shoe as well. You can see that some of the flames, as I like to call them, have some embossed lines in between that actually look okay. I'm not gonna say that the boot from the side profile is that terrible, but from most angles, it just doesn't look good. What they did here on the toe, while I understand what they were trying to do, I just don't think that it looks very good. And then you can see here on the back, it just kind of looks like a cheap takedown model, if I'm being honest, which is not good considering that this is a $220 football boot. And then one of my major pet peeves when it comes to football boots in general is the way that they did the lacing system here, where you basically have these nylon lace loops in what should just be a central lacing system with regular lace holes, because this does have a standard tongue. But again, they did it this way because that's how the Puma Inhale running shoe was. So again, I understand the inspiration, but it just made for an end product that looks quite frankly terrible. Heel liner is black, nothing to really talk about there. 
And then the sole plate again, taken from the Puma Future. You can see it has this matte white finish. It's actually a wearable finish for some reason. I'm not sure why they just wouldn't have used white plastic, but they have actually used white paint, which means that this will chip away. As far as what color is underneath, I'm not entirely sure. But again, why not just make it white plastic? The one piece of credit I will give them though, and this is a very boot nerd observation, is how seamless the upper flows through the heel and rear area of the boot in general. You can't see any seams whatsoever. You can see under this white, there is a seam right here. There has to be an order for the upper construction to actually function, but they managed to hide it underneath this white. And then I think it flows through this white part right here. It's very, very well done and very difficult to see, but it just makes it look like the entire upper is one single piece of material. When that's not possible, there has to be a seam somewhere. They did a good job of hiding it. As for the performance of the Future Retro, it retails for $220, which happens to be the same price of the regular Puma Future 5.1. Which out of these two should you buy? This one. As mentioned earlier, the sole plate and FGAG stud pattern is taken directly from the Future 5.1. So those two elements on these boots are identical, which is not a bad thing at all. I think this is a really underrated setup as far as the sole plate and stud pattern is concerned. Really aggressive traction, a nice feel to it. And I know it hasn't really changed that much over the last several years. In fact, it hasn't changed at all since the original Puma Future, but it still works really well and there's not too much to complain about. The upper, however, is not great. I don't wanna say that it's complete trash because that would be a lie, but as far as uppers on high-end boots go, especially synthetic or mesh-based ones, this is not one of the better options out there. It's a mesh-based synthetic with TPU overlays, like I mentioned, relatively thin, decent flexibility to it. So as a core material, it's honestly not that bad, but it also does kind of feel like something that would be on a higher end takedown model, which again, not terrible, just not amazing. And then you do have some added bulk from the form stripe on both the lateral and medial side, which I do believe is adding some extra structure as well, which helps with the overall responsiveness and lockdown. So the performance characteristics are definitely there. I don't think that this is an unwearable football boot by any means, but then we get to something that I mentioned earlier that I really don't like, and that is the way that they did the lacing system, where the lace is basically attached to the underside of the upper by way of these nylon lace loops, which it's kind of an old school way of doing football boots. We saw it a lot back in kind of the early 2000s as companies were trying to modernize boots. But when you have a central lacing system like this, it's just a dumb way of doing it because you end up with extra bulk. You can see how the material on its own, because you have all these overlapping materials on the edges, it just creates a lot of excess material and the touch just ends up coming off not as clean at all. I don't like the way that they did this. It does have a regular tongue, which is kind of refreshing to see. We don't see that on many football boots anymore. It seems to be made out of a very similar type of material as the rest of the boot, so no real complaints there. Low cut design, of course, internal plastic heel counter, and basically a very similar construction to a low cut Puma Future in that it has the synthetic suede liner on the inside. Then I'll give you guys a quick look at the insole. Pretty standard as well black with the Puma logo, some nice soft synthetic suede lining on top. And then it's made from a single layer of this red foam with perforated yellow foam inserts in the heel as well as the forefoot. And just because I know people will ask, let's weigh them for you in real time. Keep in mind, this is a size 9.5 US. You can see that the future retro weighs in at 7.9 ounces, the equivalent of 224 grams, which for the record is pretty much the exact same weight as the mid-cut Future 5.1. So in an attempt to make this boot a little bit less ugly, I've swapped out the stock black laces for some white reflective SR4U replacement laces, which I do think help to break up the blockiness of this particular upper, and that it matches the detailing here on the heel as well as the sole plate. It's also a great way of changing up the style of your boots in a very inexpensive way. If you're interested in some for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in some for yourself, be sure to go ahead and check that out. Now I do have to admit that I think that these boots look a lot better on feet. Still not attractive looking football boots by any means, but definitely better on feet. As far as fit and feel is concerned, they're not uncomfortable by any means. It is sitting on the current Future 5.1 sole plate, which feels really good as a base. And the shape has actually been modified from the Future 5.1 to where this is a little bit slimmer all the way through and definitely lower volume. I actually quite like the shape of them and honestly they fit really well. No complaints there at all. 
Also quite a comfortable pair of football boots with a more traditional design, central lacing system and a regular tongue. Kind of refreshing in that regard if I'm being honest. As far as width is concerned, they have some decent width to them, although definitely not particularly wide. If you have super wide feet, probably not the best option, but I do think they will fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order some for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, unless you're a diehard Puma Inhale running shoe fan, or if you happen to be gathering all of the ugliest football boots in human history, then I probably wouldn't recommend buying the Puma Future Retro. It's not a terrible pair of football boots to actually play in. Definitely think that every other option within the Puma brand would definitely be better though. It's just a football boot that is ugly, kind of just for the sake of being ugly. And that's pretty much it for me in this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please support it with a like. That helps me out tremendously. If you are, again, perhaps interested in this boot still for whatever reason, you can click the first link down below that's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal $220 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.